हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू रीड चैप्टर नाइन फ्रिक्शन यू माइट हैव सीन अ ड्राइवर ऑफ अ कार और अ ट्रक स्लोइंग डाउन द व्हीकल एट अ ट्रैफिक सिग्नल यू टू स्लो डाउन योर बाइसिकल वेन एवर नीडेड बाय अप्लाइंग ब्रेक्स हैव यू एवर थॉट व्हाई अ व्हीकल स्लोज डाउन वेन ब्रेक्स आर अप्लाइड not only vehicles any object moving over the surface of another object slows down when no external force is applied on it finally it stops have you not seen a moving ball on the group on the ground stopping after some time why do we slip when we step on a banana peel why is it difficult to walk on a smooth and wet floor You will find the answers to such questions in this chapter. Force of friction, activity nine point one. Gently push a book on a table. You observe that it stops after moving for some distance. Repeat this activity, pushing the book from the opposite direction. Does the book stop this time too? can you think of an explanation can we say that a force must be acting on the book opposing its motion this force is called the force of friction you saw that if you apply the force along the left friction acts along the right if you apply the force along the right the friction acts along the left direction in both cases the force opposes the motion of the book the force of friction always opposes the applied force in the above activity the force of friction acts between the surface of the book and the surface of the table is the friction the same for all the surfaces does it depend on the smoothness of the surface let us find out factors affecting friction the string around a brick tie a string around a brick pull the brick by a spring balance you need to apply some force note down the reading on the spring balance when the brick just begins to move it gives you a measure of the force of friction between the surface of the brick and the floor now wrap a piece of polythene around the brick and repeat the activity Do you observe any difference in the readings of the spring balance in the above two cases what might be the reason for this differences repeat this activity by wrapping a piece of jute bag around the brick what do you observe spring balance spring balance is a device used for measuring the force acting on an object it consists of a coiled spring with coiled spring which gets stretched when a force is applied to it stretching of the spring is measured by a pointer moving on the graduated scale the reading on the scale gives the magnitude of the force activity 9.3 make an inclined plane on a smooth floor or on a table you may use a wooden board supported by bricks or books put a mark with a pen at any point a on the inclined plane now let a pencil cell move down from this point how far does it move on the table before coming to rest note down the distance now spread a piece of cloth over the table make sure that there are no wrinkles in the cloth try the activity again Repeat this activity by spreading a thin layer of sand over the table. Maintain the same slope throughout the activity. In which case is the distance covered the minimum? Why is the distance covered by the pencil cell different every time? Try to reason why. Discuss the result. Does the distance covered depend on the nature of the surface on which the cell moves could the smoothness of the surface of the cell also affect this distance traveled by it I shall try the activity by wrapping a piece of sandpaper around the cell 
Friction is caused by the irregularities on the two surfaces in contact. Even those surfaces which appear very smooth have a large number of minute, ir minute irregularities on them. Irregularities on the two surfaces lock into each other. When we attempt to move any surface, we have to apply a force to overcome interlocking. On rough surfaces, there are a larger number of irregularities. So the force of friction is greater if a rough surface is involved. We see that the friction is caused by the interlocking of irregularities in the two surfaces. It is obvious that the force of friction will increase if the two surfaces are pressed harder. You can experience it by dragging a mat when nobody is sitting on it and when a person is sitting on it. Recall your experience when last time you moved a heavy box from one place to another. If you have no such experience, get that experience now. What is easier, to move the box from rest or to move it when it is already in motion? The force required to overcome friction at the instant an object starts moving from rest is a measure of static friction. On the other hand, the force required to keep the object moving with the same speed is a measure of sliding friction. When the box starts sliding, the contact point on its surface do not get enough time to lock into the contact points on the floor. So the sliding friction is slightly smaller than the static friction and you find it somewhat easier to move the box already in motion than to get it started. Friction a necessary evil. Recall now some of your experiences. Is it easier to hold a cooler, earthen pot or a glass tumbler? Suppose the outer surface of the tumbler is greasy or has a thin layer of cooking oil on it. Would it become easier or more difficult to hold it? Just think, would it be possible to hold the glass at all if there is no friction? Recall also how difficult it is to move on a wet muddy track or wet marble floor. Can you imagine being able to walk at all if there were no friction? You could not write with pen or pencil if there were no friction. When your teacher is writing with chalk on the blackboard, its rough surface rubs off some chalk particles which stick to the blackboard. Could it happen if there were no friction between the chalk and the board? If an object started moving, it would never stop if there were no friction. Had there been no friction between the tires of the automobiles and the road, they could not be started or stopped or turned to change the direction of motion. You could not fix a nail on the wall or tie a knot without friction, no building could be constructed. On the other hand, friction is an evil too. It wears out the materials whether they are screws, ball bearings or soles of shoes. You must have seen worn out steps of foot over bridges at railway stations. Friction can also produce heat, vigorously rub your palms together for a few minutes. How do you feel? When you strike a matchstick against the rough surface, it catches fire. You might have observed that the jar of a mixer becomes hot when it is run for a few minutes. You can cite various other examples in which friction produces heat. In fact, when a machine is operated, heat generated causes much wastage of energy. We shall discuss the ways of minimizing friction in the following section. Increasing and reducing friction as you have seen in the previous section, friction is desirable in some situations. Have you ever thought why the sole of your shoe is grooved? It is done to provide the shoes better grip on the floor so that you can move safely. Similarly, the treated tires of cars, trucks and bulldozers provide better grip with the ground. 
we deliberately increase friction by using brake pads in the brake system of bicycles and automobiles when you are riding a bicycle the brake pads do not touch the wheels but when you press the brake lever these pads arrest the motion of the rim due to friction the wheel stops moving you might have seen that kabaddi players rub their hands with soil for a better grip of their opponents Gymnasts apply some coarse substance on their hands to increase friction for their grip. In some situations, however, friction is undesirable and we would want to minimize it. Why do you sprinkle fine powder on the carom board? You might have noticed that when a few drops of oil are poured on the hinges of a door, the door moves smoothly. A bicycle and a motor mechanic uses grease between the moving parts of these machines. In all the above cases, we want to reduce friction in order to increase efficiency. When oil, grease or graphite is applied between the moving part of a machine, a thin layer is formed there and moving surfaces do not directly rub against each other. Interlocking of irregularities is avoided to a great extent. Movement becomes smooth. The substances which reduce friction are called lubricants. In some machines, it may not be advisable to use oil as lubricant. The air cushion between the moving parts is used to reduce friction. Can we reduce friction to zero by polishing surface or using large amount of lubricants? Friction can never be entirely eliminated. No surface is perfectly smooth. Some irregularities are always there. Wheels reduce friction. You must have seen attaches, attaches and other pieces of luggage fitted with rollers. Even a child can pull such pieces of luggage. Why is it so? Let us find out. Activity 9.4 Take a few pencils which are cylindrical in shape. Place them parallel to each other on a table. Place a thick book over it. Now push the book. You observe the pencils rolling as the book moves. Do you feel it easier to move the book in this way than to slide it? Do you think that resistance to the motion of the book has been reduced? Have you seen heavy machinery being moved by placing logs under it? When one body rolls over the surface of another body, the resistance to its motion is called rolling friction. Rolling reduces friction. It is always easier to roll than to slide a body over another. That is the reason it is convenient to pull luggage fitted with rollers. Can you now understand why the wheel is said to be one of the greatest inventions of mankind? Since the rolling friction is smaller than the sliding friction, sliding is replaced in most machines by rolling by the use of ball bearings. Common examples are the use of ball bearings between hubs and the axles of ceiling fan and bicycles. Fluid Friction you know that air is very light and thin, yet it exerts frictional force on objects moving through it. Similarly, water and other liquids exert force of friction when objects move through them. In science, the common name of gases and liquids is fluids. So we can say that fluids exert force of friction on objects in motion through them. The frictional force exerted by fluids is called drag. The frictional force on an object in a fluid depends on its speed with respect to the fluid. The frictional force also depends on the shape of the object and the nature of the fluid. It is obvious that when objects move through fluids, they have to overcome friction acting on them. In this process, they lose energy. Efforts are therefore made to minimize friction. So objects are given special shapes. Where do you think scientists get hints for these special shapes? From nature of course. Birds and fishes have to move about. 
in fluids all the time their bodies must have evolved to shapes which would make them lose less energy in overcoming friction you read about these shapes in class 6 look carefully at the shape of an aeroplane do you find any similarity in its shape and that of a bird in fact all vehicles are designed to have shapes which reduce fluid friction so this was the reading of our chapter 9 friction if you have any doubt or query you can ask me in the comment section below also you can find the links to other topics in the description box below thank you everyone